Shalom. The treasure of the Lord is just waiting to be discovered. So turn with me to Genesis chapter 4 as we seek the Lord with all of our heart. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why is your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. When God placed man, Adam, in the Garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15, he did so putting him there to work it and to keep it. Those words mean to worship and obey or to, to guard the worship of God. Those words occur separately throughout the Hebrew scriptures, but they appear together only a few times. And we see it in the book of Numbers, chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, uh, verse chapter 8 and verse 26, and chapter 18, verses 5 and 6. And when they are connected, and those are the only times we see them, is it's in relation to the priests who are serving at the tabernacle. Keep in mind that Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, the Torah. So the books of Moses. And when he wrote them, it was in the context of the tabernacle that has been given to them. The, the, the Lord has instructed Moses with the blueprints, and now it's in place, and they're worshiping God through the tabernacle. And so they are getting a, a firsthand view, if you will, uh, an understanding of what the Garden of Eden was like. And so with those connections, the priest serving at the tabernacle with to keep it and to guard it, we see that Eden was the sanctuary of God, the holy of holies, and Adam was the priest thereof. Well, Adam and Eve sinned, and then they were expelled from the garden. The last thing that we read before we are introduced to Cain and Abel is that God placed guards at the entrance to Eden, and they were cherubim with flaming sword that was turning every which direction. Now, what's the most important thing? that Adam and Eve taught their sons and would have continued on teaching throughout the, the generations until they passed away. It was that sin was introduced into the human race because of their disobedience, their rebellion against God, and that there's only one way provided by God for sins to be covered, and that was through the sacrifice. Because without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. So here we have Cain and Abel. They have different occupations, but they have only one means of coming to God. And Abel comes to the Lord with an animal sacrifice. But Cain, he comes with only the fruit of the ground. Nothing wrong with bringing fruit of the ground as an offering, but when it's only by itself, without a blood sacrifice, here's the picture that is being given. See, the Lord had cursed the ground because of Adam's sin, and he said back in chapter 3, verses 17 through 19, is that it's by the sweat of your brow now that the land will produce, that the earth will produce. Where formerly the earth produced effortlessly. There was no struggle or competition, but now there's weeds and thorns and thistles, and the ground is going to need to be cultivated. So by the threat, by the, by the sweat of, of the brow, by, by human effort, is the ground going to produce fruitfully. So this is Cain coming, in a sense, with his fig leaves to be presented before God or acceptable 
before God. He doesn't uh, realize, he doesn't acknowledge that he is in need, that he's a sinner in need of sacrifice, of forgiveness, as it were. So this is why Abel was accepted. The Lord had regard to for Abel and his offering, but not for Cain and his offering. So Cain becomes very angry because he wants to be accepted on his own terms. But God speaks to him and says, this is the provision and these are the terms by which you are accepted in my sight. So let's have a look at verse 7 of this uh, chapter. So chapter 4 and verse 7. Now, this is all in Hebrew. We don't need to know Hebrew at all. We're going to look at this idea of uh, sin is crouching at the door. Here's the word sin. It's the word hatat. It means sin or sin offering. In other words, sacrifice. So it can be translated as sin. It can also be translated as sacrifice or a sin offering. 182 times in the Hebrew Scriptures, this word hatat is translated as sin. But 116 times, it's translated as sin offering. So when we, we take a look at this, it, it ap appears as though uh, God is telling Cain, you know, if you don't do well, which is already indicating that he's walking in sin, that sin is just lurking behind the door or in the doorway before he comes through, ready to pounce on him and attack without him having any protection or, or way of, of escaping. That's not what the Lord is speaking to him here. He's telling him that uh, if, you, if you do not do well, in other words, you need to recognize and acknowledge that you are sinful and that the, I have made provision for you. So if you don't do well, sin offering or sacrifice is crouching. Now here's that word crouching. It's the word rovets. It means to crouch, but it also means to make to rest or to lie down. So here's the way that uh, we, we should be seeing this picture. Is the Lord is saying, if you do not do well, sin offering or a sacrifice is laying at the entrance. Now remember, the people of Israel are reading this in the in the context of their worship at the tabernacle. So let's go ahead to Leviticus chapter 1. Leviticus and chapter 1. We see in verse 2, the Lord is speaking to Moses to give instruction to the people of Israel. Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, when anyone, and here is that word for anyone, is Adom, man. So just as we've seen Adam, uh, the, here it is again. That's what this word means, man. So when anyone of you brings an offering to the Lord, you shall bring your offering of livestock from the herd or from the flock. If his offering is a burnt offering from the herd, he shall offer a male without blemish. He shall bring it to the entrance of the tent of meeting, or the sanctuary, that he may be accepted before the Lord. So back with Cain and Abel, the original sanctuary entrance is the Garden of Eden. It's the gates that the cherubim are guarding. See, the they are given to us here, and the next time we see the cherubim, there's no flaming sword, but they are woven, interwoven into the, uh, the curtain that separates the holy place from the most holy place in the sanctuary, the tabernacle of God, and there are two cherubim that are fashioned on top of the Ark of the Covenant, which indicates the very presence of God. And so here the Lord is saying that there's provision he says, if you do well, you will be accepted, but you can't do well on your own. It's only through the sacrifice, and it's through the sacrifice you will be accepted. And here really is what the Lord is speaking to him when he says this, if you do well, you will be accepted. It's the word tetiv seat, and it means if you do well, be raised up. It speaks of resurrection. It speaks of Yeshua. It's a forward-looking picture, even as as their parents 
uh, Adam and Eve have been told that the Lord is going to send a deliverer who will crush the head of the serpent, that he is the one who will, through his resurrection, give us his resurrection life. So that being the case, let's go ahead to the Brit Hadashah, to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So if we do well, we will be accepted, but it's only through the blood sacrifice. And all of those animal sacrifices were in anticipation of this final and complete once and for all. Verse 21, for our sake, he being God made him Jesus to be sin who knew no sin so that in Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. So Jesus did not become sin. It's that same concept of hatat that he is a our sin offering or sacrifice. So for our sake, God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be our sin offering, our sacrifice, so that through him and in him, we might become the righteousness of God. And so uh, like Abel, we need to acknowledge that we are in need of the sacrifice in our place. Not like Cain, who said, I don't need this, and he became angry. Let's put aside our pride and see that we stand accepted in the presence of God as we stand in the righteousness of that sacrifice, Jesus.